example, you had a reflection assignment where you read these short vignettes of different classes and you sort of talked about which kind of teaching you thought you might be most likely to do. And so the first pair of classrooms was about the style of teaching. The next set was about the role of the real world in the mathematics classroom. And then the last room was, or the last pair was about the district and whether they tracked students or not. And I want to talk about each of these in a little more detail. So starting with pedagogy, the style of teaching, there was classroom A, which I'm going to talk about in this speech or this talk as teacher centered and classroom B, which is student centered. And I want to unpack this one a little bit more because it's a central idea in our course. So in a teacher centered classroom, the teacher or text is often going to show a strategy that students are going to practice. So maybe they show how to solve one or two example problems and then kids do sort of a worksheet with a lot of the same kind of exercise over and over. And I'm calling them exercises because it's not really a problem. If I just told you how to do it and you're just practicing it, that's not a problem to be solved. In a student-centered classroom, we actually use real problems. The kids haven't been told how to do the problem yet and they're going to develop their own strategies and usually they're only going to focus on one or maybe a couple of really rich problems and go in depth instead of doing a ton of them in, a, in the same period of time. In a teacher-centered classroom, when students struggle, the teacher's often going to step in and sort of show them what to do. They might say, oh, don't forget to carry the one at this point. Um, in a student-centered classroom, the teacher has to work harder to think about what kinds of questions can I ask that draw out the student's thinking but don't take over for them. Maybe I ask them to draw a picture or ask what they're thinking so far so I can get some, make some decisions about how to support them without doing the math for them. In a teacher-centered classroom, we tend to see more emphasis on memorization, on practice, and on fluency. Well, as in a student-centered classroom, there tends to be more emphasis on understanding and flexibility. However, I did put along with fluency there in italics because you still get a focus on and development of fluency skills. In a teacher-centered classroom, you see a lot less student talk. They maybe are responding to short questions from the teacher, but there's not as much discourse and dialogue in general. Whereas in a student-centered teaching, you see a lot more of the talking coming from the students, and the teacher has more of a goal of facilitating that conversation. Overarching, the single biggest thing to think about with the difference between these two is that in a teacher-centered classroom, the teacher or the textbook does mathematics. They figure out problems, they show how to do it, they do the mathematical thinking. And the, the goal is really just that the students sort of memorize or copy that and try to get that into their brain. Whereas in a student-centered classroom, the students actually do mathematics. They solve problems, they figure out how to do it, they communicate and explain their thinking. All right, so what do we know about this and how does this match up with a lot of people's intuitions about good teaching? Um, a lot of, especially everyday non-professionals views about teaching versus what we actually know from research. So a lot of people's intuition is that classroom A is better. It looks like the classrooms they were in. It feels like a normal math class. Um, but research actually shows us that student-centered classrooms are much more effective. So one common belief is kids are just not going to be able to solve problems. How will they possibly know how to solve a math problem unless I show them how? In fact, even young children um, come to the classroom really ready to solve problems. They need to be developmentally appropriate problems, but they come ready to solve problems. We sometimes talk about kids as natural problem solvers. And on the flip side, if we don't give them problems to solve, real genuine problems, then they get worse at it um, by being in school. They learn that math is about memorizing what the teacher says, not about thinking for themselves. And a common intuition people have is that story problems are really confusing. Many people remember them as a difficult part of their math experiences. And in fact, what, that goes counter to what we actually know about kids' thinking. Uh, people in general, and kids in particular, are really do better when there's a context that they understand or are familiar with, and they can use that to start thinking about the math. Young children do better at solving story problems as long as it's um, you know, in the language they understand and they understand the context. They do much better with it. And one of the reasons that story problems end up being hard in school is just because of the way math is taught and kids sort of learn that they're difficult and they're presented in ways that are more difficult. Another common belief or intuition people have is that kids aren't going to be able to solve problems unless they know their basic skills first. You've got to get the foundation first and then you can solve problems is sort of a big belief. And again, this also runs counter to what we actually see in practice. Kids are really good at inventing strategies 
that don't rely on a basic skill or fact or don't rely on a memorized strategy and they'll have really inventive ways of thinking about and handling problems. And then finally, there's often just this belief that, yes, but separately, kids just really need to learn their facts, that it's just something they need to do, it's a foundation for more advanced mathematics, and that it's a high priority. Um, <clears throat> the, the truth is that, okay, even if that's true, and some people would debate how important that is in today's world, but even if it's true, it doesn't matter because kids in a student-centered classroom do just as well on any kind of test of basic skills or math facts. That's, in fact, something we've studied quite thoroughly. This is a topic in general that's been studied quite extensively in the field of math ed, um, this, whole, this whole section. But in particular, how do they do on their sort of basic skills? They do just as well if they're in either kind of classroom. Uh, but what we gain in the student-centered classroom is that kids do much better on any kind of higher order thinking type tasks, dealing with new problems, being flexible, explaining their thinking. Um, so really you don't lose anything in a student-centered classroom, but you gain a lot. It is more challenging for you as the teacher and you need better skills and expertise and that's part of what we'll work on this semester.